Hello everyone, I'm Stacy, and this is the For Bricks and Giggles YouTube channel. Today is a very special video because I have just added one of my top bucket list sets to my collection. I would say in the history of LEGO, this is probably in the top 10, if not the top 5, most wanted sets on my bucket list. So instead of announcing it, I'm going to give a couple more seconds of suspense and wait until it's on screen for you to see it. So let's get started. All right, here it is. How many of you all were able to guess what set this was based on the thumbnail? This is the Dark Forest Fortress set 6079 from 1996. And this has been a dream set of mine for as long as I can remember. I have looked at this set thousands of times. As far back as I can remember, I was staring at it on eBay as a kid in the early 2000s. And even then it was crazy expensive and an incredibly rare set. There were only ever three Dark Forest sets made, and this one was the largest. It's around 460 pieces and comes with seven minifigures. And this was an incredible birthday surprise this year, and I'm so incredibly grateful for this gift. I don't think I've ever been more nervous about building a set. Sometimes these types of raised base plates can be fragile, and building an entire set on one, I was so worried I might damage or break it. In all honesty, if I ever take this set apart it will only be to wash it. This set will definitely have a permanent display spot on my shelf from here on. So before I get too far into the set I'll go ahead and show you the minifigures first. So this set does come with seven minifigures. First up we have one of the dark forest men. Forest men number one. The forest men in this set are rare for the most part. This guy alone is starting at $50 if you wanted to buy him individually. I love the pattern for this torso. Only ever found in two sets which is what makes it rare and valuable. Next up we have Forestman number two. I love the blue feather plume and how it matches his blue arms. Also the brown hat with the brown torso is super nice as well. Another rare and valuable minifigure. He starts at about $65 if you want to buy him individually. I remember finding this torso one time in a bulk lot and I think I sold it for like $15 at the time. Probably been four or five years ago when I was fairly new to Bricklink and I didn't realize how valuable it was. Sold in record speed. <laughs> but it's because I really undervalued that sale. But an all-around great minifigure. He's also holding one of the classic Forestman shields. I'm so happy they brought that shield back, obviously in reddish brown, but I think it's still available on Pick a Brick as far as I know. I've definitely stocked up on a lot of those since the re-release. The original ones will obviously cost you quite a bit, but the remake is pretty great too. Here we have Forestman number three. I miss this hood piece. That was a great headgear piece back around this era. They did bring it back in dark brown for a little while, but in any color, it's not been in a set since 2016. Maybe someday they'll bring it back again. I know I would love that. Another great torso pattern, and I absolutely love the head for him as well. Anytime they print the hair directly on the head, I think that's pretty cool. So that definitely makes this minifigure super unique. Then finally, we have Forestman number four to complete all of the Forestmen for this set. I love the matching brown hood and brown legs, as well as the super rare torso pattern for him. All around great minifigure. You do also get two dragon knights, so dragon knight number one here. Guess he qualifies as the arch nemesis for the forest men. I always really enjoyed the dragon knights. They too have amazing torso designs, and I like that we've moved away from just the standard grin pattern for the heads. Just gives them a little more character. And then Dragon Knight number two. I like the silver pattern, kind of armor design on his torso. Another super cool head pattern as well. And then finally, you do get one skeleton. I love on Bricklink, he's listed as skeleton with floppy arms, which is definitely the best way to describe it. I know some people don't care for the floppy arms because they're not easily posable, and in a lot of cases, not posable at all, but I've always preferred this version. And I assume he qualifies as a deceased Dragon Knight, but I I don't know that 100% for sure. But either way, a super classic minifigure. So seven truly wonderful minifigures. All right, as for the rest of the build, we'll start with the little covered wagon next. So this is a great little classic covered wagon build. I love the original brown horse and the fun blue and red color scheme. This is driven by the Dragon Knights. So you do have some weaponry pieces on either side. A great dragon printed shield there. There is also a treasure chest there in the back filled with red and green translucent round plates. 
to represent jewels. And then this does open in a really cool way. It actually lifts up here and inside we have one of those classic scroll pattern tiles and a couple of yellow goblets. So you get two of the yellow goblets and then this wonderfully printed tile, which is definitely one of my favorite tiles of this era. So a really fun little covered wagon build. Such a huge fan of this style of build during this time. So now for the rest of this build that comes on this amazing raised base plate. This base plate is exclusive to this set with this pattern. There were a few other variations of patterns that came on this base plate, but this kind of greenery with the roadway was exclusive to this set. Currently there are only three of this base plate for sale on Bricklink and they were all at least $50 and I think all of them were damaged in some way. So like I had said before definitely a fragile base plate although nothing could make me dislike any kind of raised base plate. I don't care how fragile they are. Raised base plate sets will always be probably my favorite sets that LEGO ever produced. Obviously there are some exceptions to that, but if it comes on a raised base plate that automatically knocks it up a few notches in terms of which ones are my favorites. I had previously done a video on all the raised base plate sets in my collection and now I'm thinking I might need to update that video. So you do get a second horse as well. White horse with a nice red saddle. I love the color scheme for this set. All the green and brown is really nice. I can't really think of other sets that were done like this stylistically. I feel like we have an entire city line of sets where everything is cityscapes and now kind of after looking at this or other Forestman sets I'm wondering why we haven't done more like nature type builds or nature sets. I feel like there would be other things you could do if you weren't wanting to make a castle theme again that could still be kind of nature outdoorsy kind of like the A-frame cabin but with more of these like tree builds. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe there's not too much you could do to create that as a separate theme, but it does make me wonder and try to imagine some alternative sets. Here kind of on the back side of the set, there is this great drawbridge that comes with a string reel. So you can lift up the drawbridge to prevent people from accessing and entering this fortress. In the photos, it shows the horse kind of hanging out in here. There's this little brown basket that's on the interior there, which I assume you could fill up with food for the horse if you wanted to. Down at this end, we have another goblet as well as a classic brown barrel. Lots of leafy builds, really great use of these brown arches. I actually just mentioned those brown arches in the video where I opened the blind bags from Japan and how much I liked that style of tree. So there's tons of those throughout this. It's just kind of funny timing. I like the little blue roof accent pieces, just gives it a little bit of added color. And then there's a great area at the top where you could keep quite a few of your minifigures to be lookout for the incoming Dragon Knights. Right there is a little Technic axle and bush piece. And so if you pull that out, it will release this whole tree piece here in the front. I'd recommend removing any of the fragile minifigures so you don't damage them. Really cool and definitely effective if you have anyone or anything coming through that roadway there. I should also point out all of these great brown panel pieces. There are 12 in total for this set and they're pretty rare. They only came in this set and one other set in the color brown. Obviously in many other colors, they're available in many, many sets. That was a great piece that I desperately wish Lego would bring back. It is a top favorite piece of mine. And so this is actually the first set I've had with it in brown. So another reason it's an exciting addition to the collection. I've got a little tree build here in the front with an area for your minifigure to keep lookout. This piece right here swivels. It's got a few green leafy pieces to camouflage it. It's got some ladders. Again, I think it would be great for a little lookout area. Lots of great lookout areas on this set, including up top here. Here. Another hidden alcove here in the back that you could keep a minifigure and a tiny blue shutter. I always really liked those itty bitty shutters. I thought they were so cute. And then at the top of this tree build is actually a cage that contains the skeleton. So that does open 
and you can keep someone trapped inside. Just place this little piece here in front of it to keep it locked. And then you can also have your guard up top. And I assume since the ladder only goes to this level that you use these great vine pieces to kind of climb your way to the top here. So there are definitely so many great features to this set. It's even more amazing to see it in person. It was a truly fun build and I will be attaching the speed build to the end of this video if you're interested in seeing how this set was designed and built. It's such a classic era of Lego. I'm not someone who's entirely bitter and jaded about the current era of Lego. I always think there are great things about Lego and a lot of times you can't see how great something is until you're five or ten years past it, which happens a lot and people then have to try and go back and buy things they didn't like initially when they saw them the first time. I try to make sure that never happens, especially now when I know how expensive things will get in the future. So while I think I'll always prefer older sets like this, I do still love current Lego and I never want it to sound like I don't. But with that being said, sets like these will always have my heart. I'm honestly still in shock that I own this set and I'm looking forward to the day that I do a top 10 sets in my entire collection. Spoiler alert, this one will definitely be on it. Obviously this set is expensive and rare and hard to get nowadays. Also equally difficult to find in bulk lots. I feel like most people now know what they have when they have Forestman sets so you don't really find those people who are selling stuff that they're unaware that it's worth something. So getting this might be difficult but if you have the opportunity or you have the funds to do it then I truly can't recommend this set enough. In my opinion it's one of the most iconic sets in Lego history and I absolutely love it. If you enjoyed this video, like and subscribe. And if you're interested in extra videos and content, check out the membership program starting at only 99 cents a month. There are already more than 45 episodes available. See you all next time.